This is Achievement Hunting 101. Welcome to level 303. I am Big L, and with me, as always, we have Koosh Moose. Hello for the first time today. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's the first time or not. Hmm. Uh, Wild West is out on assignment. In to take his place is Matriarch. Hello, Michelle. Well, hello. And what assignment is Wild West on? Uh, bad games. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't we have a glut of people on that assignment at this point? He's having a pity party playing pity pit. Oh, nice. Nicely done. Yeah. And that game is something that rhymes with pit that I will not tell you. Uh, Twit. Twitty Conway did the soundtrack for that. That lovely game. But yeah, there uh we may as well start with that. There's a contest going on that Chewy told us not to exhibit any unhealthy behavior. <laughs> a gamer score contest for the month of May. And I think we did this three years ago. That's crazy. So Nate, have you been gamer score lady of the nighting it up? Uh yes, I have. I'm quite the painted lady. I <laughs> um I have been but I've been selective <laughs> with how I'm being unhealthy. Uh, and what I what I've been doing okay. is I've been picking those baby games. Uh, mm -hmm. You know the game. You know those games. The games that every you know six months or whatever get a little you know one thousand boost to them uh, added. So I, I've taken anything on my list that I've started that isn't maxed out above a thousand, uh, and I've gone ahead and I've tried to clear most mm. of them out. Um, so I, I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff. Um, you know, your, uh, your bullet beats, your, um, your castle of no escapes, one and twos <laughs> and your butterflies uh -huh. and your 50 uh -huh. years is, uh, -huh. uh, and trophy. Oh my long. gosh. Trophy. We, I don't think we've talked about trophy. Have we? I, I don't recall. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, well, okay. So it's the game where you, you punch in. Okay. So it's basically Mega Man two, right? But not good. And, um, oh. Trophy. You can enter in codes, and they basically a code basically gives you an achievement. There's like ten of them or something. It's not great. It's not great. Felt really bad doing that. But I'll tell you what, I was surprised <laughs> by Peepaw's Farm. Peepaw's oh, Farm. Yeah? Peepaw's Farm. That was actually fun. Uh, I liked that. Um, it it needed a little more, um, but what was there was not bad. And I, I'd heard a lot about it, but. As, excuse me as far as a, a baby game uh that's not a uh not a 1000 plus game so it didn't really fit that part of the category but it did fit my quick games i have access to that i've been meaning to look at uh, that one wasn't bad um but as far as as bad behavior that's about as bad as it got um yeah i see some other things here i don't really want to you know talk about them though <laughs> <laughs> never want to talk about like, Tony and Clyde. Oh. Oh, that's one of your favorites. That was a disappointment. It was that's supposed an to old be favorite. Right. I've mostly followed your lead, and I finished up Project Starship and Null Drifter and Red Death and those type of things. Shooter guys. That's a good time. I, I of course, did uh, Abs Animals. That was a real classic. But I haven't done too much outside. I, I need to... I don't know. Do I need to? No, I think you're not supposed no. to. Oh, um, oh, right. You're not supposed to. Yeah, you're not supposed to. Not everybody's listening to that, though. No one's following that, uh, that general, <laughs> general uh, directive. But Because... Uh... Speaking of Pity Pit, yeah, that's one of the games I don't have completed. And every time I go back to it, I just turn it off i don't even do it michelle that's your favorite game right you have that completed 
I mean, I wouldn't call it my favorite. I, I guess I'd put it on the short list, but um, yeah, it was it's fine for what it is. I, I like, guess uh, the solution's like, yeah, go all the way to level two and then restart. And I'm like, I can't even be level one. What are they talking about? Level? There's a level two. I usually get like one coin and kill one enemy and die, and then I start over. <laughs> I think I've <laughs> sure played the game on wrong. three different occasions because of the title updates or wherever it showed up on different contests. Yeah. And in all three instances, I seem to remember the same arc of playing Pity Pit, which was what you were explaining for the first like 15 minutes. And then finally having a good run and saying, oh, this... I actually get what's going on here. This isn't bad. And then my next mm -hmm. run getting whatever achievement I was going for and stopping. Uh, so there is a learning curve? I think so, Maybe. but I think some of it's just more patience like your your inclination especially huh. with these easy games is just just keep digging and and Rush. go grab things quick you only have two hearts you can only get hit twice but if you collect coins you can get more powerful bombs or whatever else it may be uh so if you slow down a little bit while you're playing it it'll actually take less time to finish the game but that's just these these very easy achievement games have put us in that mindset of you know i'm just going to hold a or left bumper or whatever until mm. the achievements pop and, and that's it and i i not not in a, any grand way but maybe pity pit just requires just a tiny bit more finesse to get through uh as as quickly as you possibly can yeah i sometimes go back to butterfly also and i always forget that if you just press start the achievement pops like like what I actually like doing the levels in that game, so I, I get annoyed when you try to pause it and quit out, and then the achievement pops. Mm -hmm. Good yeah, for I mean, some I, people, I suppose. Well, that's that's always the deal, right? There's no mm -hmm. one right way to do any of this. Like, there there isn't. L, just stop. There's no one right oh. way to <laughs> engage with any of this. And, Butterfly and, is a classic that demands to be played, Michelle. Well, I just mean more generally with the way that we oh. approach our, our gaming, right? Because <laughs> there are, I'm just doing a quick count here real quick. And keeping in mind, we're recording on May 14th. So the month's about, but not quite half over. And it looks like there are something like 13 or 14 people that are over 20,000 gamer score for the month already. Um, and several that are quite a bit higher. Um, for me, like just looking at that is giving me burnout, but for the folks doing mm -hmm. that, I'm sure there are some degree of people who are like, Hey, you know, I'm getting kind of tired of this. And I'm sure there are others that are like, it's thrilling to kind of be in this chase, uh, to try to outscore other people who are participating in the game. Um, so there's no wrong way to approach it. As long as what you're doing is having a good time, I, w I would hope. All right. Well, if we wanted to have a good time. We wouldn't be doing things like playing farm together. I am so mad at Wild West for not being here because I wanted to tell him that after railing on this game so much, I have actually been enjoying my time with this game. And I wanted to see the shocked look on his face, but he's going to have to listen to, and, and tell me that he had a shocked look. Um, I remember playing this back months ago i think rocker had a farm there were some good farms going around and you could pop a lot of achievements by visiting friends farms and because i did this i really didn't know what i was doing because i was just going to other farms and achievements were popping and i really didn't know what i was doing so i finally sat down started my own farm and started doing the quests and I'm like oh i know what i'm doing but now i started running out of money so i need help I imagine I just have to wait, which is one of the things I didn't like about this game. You have to wait for things to to be able to be harvested. It's just a lot of waiting. There's timers. The good thing is that there are actual timers, so you can go uh, boot up another game while this game sits in quick resume, Nate, and then you can just pop back in and harvest your things and then uh, pop back out. So this is the perfect quick resume game. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it showed up on my RTDL. And so 
I was reminded of the stupid things we do for achievements. Uh, there's an achievement for running a certain length or walk a total of 210,975 meters equal to five marathons. So what does any achievement hunter do? Right. Rubber band the sticks together and run around a circle and leave the room. But you know what? I got the achievement. But there's plenty of other grindy ones to do. Uh, you walk, you you save time by riding around in a tractor. And when you're in the tractor, you can harvest nine things at once instead of one on foot. So you have to use your tractor on 100,000 tiles. And you need to plow 50,000 tiles. So there's definitely some grindy stuff. But you wouldn't know it by the ratio of this game. The ratio of this game is so minuscule that you wouldn't even believe it. It's all less than a two. It's worth 1,700 TA and 1,200 gamer score. So only 500 TAD, as Elroy likes to say. So the people that play these simulation management games are really in it. Because the completion estimate on this game is a 150 to 200 hours. Well, I, I think something I to, about, to it's crazy. consider. Yeah, um, something to consider though when talking about those um, times to complete farm to or the ratio to complete farm mm -hmm. together. Uh, it was never on Game Pass, and it's not freely available. And so mm. the total number of tracked gamers is just over two thousand. It's not a super super popular game. So the people buying and playing farm together are the people who are totally happy spending one hundred fifty mm -hmm. to two hundred hours now look roaming again. around what oh i'm sorry so it's thirteen thousand with 2000 completed yeah, yeah. but still yeah. thirteen thousand yeah. is a small number this mm -hmm. farm farm together as i recall is really easy to get on your tag it does not take much mm -hmm. uh, i'm just gonna confirm that it's pretty much yeah you just plant your first crop and it's on your tag right away yeah. if farm together existed once again either as free to play or game pass this ratio would be significantly probably in the seven thousands because of how grindy it is but people playing farm together are choosing to play farm together. So I, I think that goes a long way towards keeping those ratios more limited. Uh, Nate, did you ever play this game? Did I ever do what now? Uh, play farm together. Yes, I actually played it. It's, uh, I completed it. I had a good Wait, time. What? How come you're not farming with me together? I, I... Because I'm already done. It's, oh, I, uh, that's how this works. Finished it. I uninstalled it. I have a question for you, Kush. Yeah. Um, because you're one of those folks with a nephew. Did you employ said nephew in helping with the very grindy stuff in Farm Together? Uh, not really. Um, because because of how finicky it is with some things. Like I was going to uh, I was going to do that with the um the grinding of the uh the squares. So uh mm -hmm. so uh planting like the and tiles. Them plowing, uh, so that I was going to uh, to Cronus, but it's much more efficient to use the tractor. But then when you use the tractor, you have to worry about gas. So it was like factoring all that in. I was like, I wanted to do it just for the challenge of oh, it'd be cool to write a script that would work and would do this because you know that's just the kind of kind of geek I am. Um, mm -hmm. Like I don't even you know achievement aside the challenge of of programming that thing and making that you know coming up with a solution for that is you know interesting to me um however uh it was too problematic and what it would do if you weren't careful is it would trash your gas station mm. and trashing your gas station is devastating in, yeah. in farming together because you do not get the materials back at the same rate that you put them in so like the oh, diamonds no. or whatever the metals or whatever it was ribbons to build the yeah. The Wait, so you were accidentally yeah. recycling things? I didn't. Rocker did. Rocker accidentally recycled his uh, his script. Accidentally recycled one of his gas stations, oh, and he had no. been playing more than I had, so he had a bunch oh, of ribbons. accidentally. So I barely had enough ribbons to Rocker get by, to build all my gas stations and things like that. So I didn't have extra ribbons to go around. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to mess with this. I'm going to be. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to watch some Netflix. I'm going to do this while I watch Netflix. Mm -hmm. I will be the automation. And uh, I was my own nephew. And uh, I had a good time. 
yeah i i had bruce willis this mother <laughs> and um and yeah i had a good time okay. with it. i mean if you want to send me uh the, the script the netflix so list just, that i was uh, watching sure okay that's fine <laughs> lots of gilmore girls i started watching the the new summoning salt video last night uh the tetris video uh do- okay who is summoning salt exactly and what are uh, summoning salt's videos about oh oh summoning salt puts together the history of speed running games and his specialty is that even if you're not interested in the games he tells the story in such a way that you will become interested so he's done like mike tyson's punch out halo Mario Brothers, everything from old NES all the way down to current stuff. But some interesting stuff has been found recently on NES Tetris, and the speedrunning community is all over this old, old game. And his videos get millions of views within the, uh, the first couple of days. It's very good stuff. Highly recommended. Wow. I feel like I should get a commission for that. Anyway, yeah, so I've been enjoying Farm Together. If anyone wants to farm with me, let me know. I learned actually pretty recently that if you go into another farm first and start doing stuff there, uh, a meter fills up, and then you get double your resources in your farm for like 40 minutes. So it they actually encourage you to go and farm together and go in someone else's farm first. So I think there's a sequel out on Steam. I imagine Xbox will be getting it soon. It wouldn't surprise me. You know, interesting, interesting fact. Uh, and I remember, I remember this um, when we were talking about Army of Ruin. But um, I loved Army of Ruin, and it was the same developer. So I think it was the graphic oh. style or something kind of tied them together for me. And I remember being like, "Oh man, farm together!" Like kicked. But or you know, the developer kick butt with Army of Ruin. I'm looking forward to farm together too. I'm just not gonna tell me when I'm doing it. Um <laughs> you have to uh you have to stalk me. Get it? No, oh, uh, that joke was corny. Yeah. There you go. I don't get it. <laughs> so uh before we get to your showcase games i wanted to quickly touch on the may targets and discuss something else um this month has games with the versus flag in which you need six achievements uh so i tricked michelle into uh playing mlb the show 24 with me and we had a good old-fashioned boosting session just the two of us and in about two hours we got about 18 or 19 of the game's 25 achievements just for playing two players online with each other so i'm pretty sure you can do these with two controllers as well but that seems like a lot more work actually than just getting someone else and playing online so and i we weren't super streamlined when we were doing this either we were just kind of cherry picking things off the list and then going okay maybe we can work on this or that i'm sure if somebody like really took the time to dive into the list you could probably do this and even do the 18 19 achievements we did in mlb the show in even less time than it took us but mlb the show i i haven't played a baseball video games since baseball on the nes i think um i love the game baseball i've just never really been super interested in playing the video game versions of it and i think right from them and i knew this was a thing that those games did but from the second i popped it on it's like downloading current rosters i was like wait hold on because all through like the playstation one era and all that i'm like why can't these games just let you download the or download wouldn't have been even been a word i was thinking of but why can't these games just update to have the new rosters instead of making you purchase the new one every year and it just i was like wow look at that this guy is injured and he's injured today the way he is in real life that's so cool and mlb the show is really good it's fun to play i like i definitely have missed out uh by not trying it 
previously. Again, as somebody who loves the game of baseball, it's great. Yeah, it definitely helped that this achievement list was not as crazy as 23, not as intimidating. Um, one thing that I really wanted to rub into Wild West's face is that I'm pretty sure he had trouble with the achievement for making a diving catch. And I think, well, Michelle, do you remember? I think you got this as like your second achievement or something um, like that. It was, yeah, it was I think, really, uh, really early on. I got it really early. Yeah. It was in our first game <laughs> that we played. And, um, and I'm like, we, I'm was, like, that one. It was, you know, just total mistake. There was a pop up to short and we were trying to manipulate the game so the inning would go longer. So I, tell the shortstop to get the heck out of the way and the left fielder runs in and makes a diving catch and you know, <laughs> leaping, leaping and pop. it was it was really uh yeah really unsuspected yeah it was um uh it looks like i mean it wasn't among the first i got but it was very early i remember okay. that much yeah and then i wound up getting it a couple hours later after some after trying for it multiple times so right oh it was the fourth achievement i got so it wasn't that that far in. nice but what's funny is that i remember in the discord redemption also had trouble getting that it was the last one he needed and there's actually a crazy solution for um doing something to manipulate the game into thinking that you did it so hmm. you didn't have to we didn't have to do anything crazy so that was a lot of fun, and I recommend it to anybody who needs it for the versus targets for May. You can get some stuff done really quickly. <laughs> Just one other and, thing with the yeah. with the diving achievement, though. When I popped that achievement, I didn't realize it was an achievement. So the in you know the play played out, and I was like, oh, I got this achievement for this. And I think sometimes as achievement hunters, we psych ourselves up when we see something that's like, oh, this is going to be hard to do because you were talking about how it took you multiple tries at the end uh and and sometimes just not knowing and playing it it just things just work out so i think that was one of those situations for me yes yeah so the hardest thing we have to do now is play 24 games and but you could do three innings oh <laughs> uh, there is a warning i wanted to tell everyone there is another achievement for winning a game by 24 or more runs so I decided, like, in the ninth inning, you know what, Michelle, you're going to get this achievement. So I started doing intentional walk after intentional walk after intentional walk. And the game <laughs> the game kicked me out for griefing. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you're going to do that, maybe do that one with two controllers or... Maybe make sure you get a couple runs every now and again, and then your opponent get a lot more runs. But just a fun, fun game. And I was telling Michelle, actually, the achievement list actually doesn't do the game service because you don't have to do the, the Diamond Dynasty at all or the new Negro League mode that they added back into this game. So I'd like to tell myself that I'm going to try some of the stuff anyway once getting to completion, but... I probably won't because this game is almost 100 gigs that I'd love to get uh, mm -hmm. reclaim. <laughs> yeah, it is chunky. Oh, anyway, MLB is fun. Nate, you can wake up now. Oh. I, you have a real game to talk about. No more sports ball. No more it's Mets true. are going to win the World Series talk from me. Because that's <laughs> <laughs> the best joke you've uh, told all night. I'm excited to hear your your game. So what do you got on tap for us? Oh, my gosh, I'm going to start right now. The game I'm talking oh, boy. about is the game of the year contender, uh, or one of the game of the year contenders, Little Kitty Big City. Uh, this just came to Game Pass, uh, and it is amazing. There you go. That's all you need to know. Um, all right, bye. This, this game is everything Let's I wanted it. it to be. Uh, if you had watched the trailer, the sizzle reel, uh, this game is about a cat uh, exploring his neighborhood after he falls out of a window. Um, and uh, it's, it is just glorious. It is just 
cozy, cute, uh, exploration, no agenda, like no pressure. You're, you're just going into this game and you're just experiencing it. That That's how you should play it. Um, mm-hmm. It's it. You start out, uh, you fall out of your window uh, and man, do you fall? You fall really far, but you're a cat. So somehow uh, you survive the fall. Uh, it's it's cute what happens. Uh, he he uh, befriends a bird, and this bird um, basically cons him into getting him shinies. So <laughs> uh, you'll be you'll be picking up all kinds of shiny mm-hmm. things. And they're called shinies. I'm pretty sure. A hundred of them, or two hundred <laughs> of them, I think. Um, mm-hmm. They're all over the place, and you can um, you can find them naturally, or you can kind of cheese it, but. You don't need to worry about that until the end of the game. If you're actually low on shinies, I didn't have any problem uh, getting all the shinies. Um, When you first start off, you don't have very many uh, options available to you. Um, You can do simple things like jump uh, and you'll kind of get the hang of that. You can run, you can jump. um, You can bat things off of ledges because that's what cats do. And man, is that fun. It is just, it is fun to go around um and, and be a cat knocking things over uh you cannot cross water so that's one of their ways of kind of guiding you and kind of locking you into um kind of a path initially uh to get out and to explore um certain animals like the dogs i think dogs are the only ones um that will prevent you from progressing down certain um streets until you have found a way to deal with them um you'll get abilities uh not very many but you'll um we'll jump you'll pick up like a camera very very early on that will allow you to take pictures and um my daughter played this game she saw me playing of course she had to play it immediately of course actually i think she she knew about this because of the trailer so she was (laughs) she kept asking me when it's coming out it's like it's coming (laughs) out tomorrow uh so when she got home from school that day she was just like little kitty big city let's go so we jumped in uh she very quickly learned that you can use the camera to look around corners and to look up and look down within a certain range of yourself. So if you're trying to figure out where to go or, you know, where something might be hidden, um, you could use the camera, uh, just, you know, pull up the camera and just kind of zoom around, fly around away from your cat, figure out what's going on and kind of like get an idea for, okay, well, this is the path I need to take. Um, you will be uh, getting little quests as you explore. You'll run into something. And all of a sudden, boom, like a little thing comes up and says, oh, do ten, do that 10 more times or nine more times. Um, and when you do that, typically the reward is going to be a hat. Um, and most of the hats, like fruits or vegetables, just like melon cat. So you can look like a melon cat. Um, sure. Sometimes there'll be little actual hats. Um, my favorite was a little magician's hat. So I was wearing like a little magician's hat as I was running around. But you can get all you can get a bunch uh, more. Like a, there's like a devil cat. Um, just, it's just good times. Um, and one of the fun things about this game. Uh, oh, another another ability that you'll be getting is uh, the ability to climb things. Uh, you don't have that initially. You can jump on things, but you can't climb. Um, and like uh, what was that game? Little Gator game, which was also a big hit in my household. Um, there is the ability to, like Zelda, to climb based off of stamina. And the way you increase that is by getting uh, four fish. There will be four fish scattered around the level. Uh, every time you eat a fish, you get a stamina bar. So you'll, you'll eventually get four stamina bars that will allow you to climb uh, even higher. And you'll need those in order to complete the game because you just can't get where you need to go uh, until you have enough stamina. Um, but as, as you're walking around and you, and you do something that's just kind of fun, well, guess what? That is a challenge that you have to do. And um, and they just kind of like, you don't know about these things. You just discover them just by going out there and having a good time and exploring the city just like the cat that you are. Um, there's all kinds of cool little Easter eggs. Um, like I don't want to, I don't want to give too many of them away, but I want to let you know what you're in store for if you play this game and things to kind of like look out for. Uh, one of the things that I learned very early on, or I discovered very early on, is when you bring up the menu and you start looking through your list of things that you have to do, your cat is watching you. 
and your cat is watching the cursor. So as you're like scrolling up towards the top of the list, you see the cat kind of like looking up at it and kind of turning its head and looking up. And then as you're scrolling down to the bottom of the list, like the cat's like looking at that list, you know, your list takes up half of your screen. The cat takes up the other half. And the cat's just watching this <laughs> go by. It's awesome. And um, there'll be other things like, uh, gosh, I don't want to give too much away, but um, <laughs> like, it, yeah, yeah. I would just I walk on top of everything. How about that? When you're in the game, walk on top of everything, and you'll be surprised at the level of interactivity that there is in this game. Like the things that they've thought of, like, oh my gosh, that's genius. Of course that would happen. Of course that's a thing that would, you know, happen if you know you were a cat. Um, the game is just so much fun. Uh, I love it. And I wish there was more. Um, I completed it pretty quickly. It looks like I spent six hours and 13 minutes in it. Um, for the most part, it was just a joy. Uh, there was a little bit of grinding at the end, um, but it wasn't bad. Um, let's see. So the things you're going to be doing, you're going to be smashing items. You're going to use an emote once. I didn't really use the emotes, but my my daughter did. She liked to use the emote in order to sleep or to, uh, as the game refers to it, make muffins. You know, like a, <laughs> the a knee, knee thing. Yeah. You can knead the ground with your with your claws. So she would do that. She loved that. I, I didn't really get into that too much um some of these some of these achievements are just kind of like fun things that happen uh i don't so i don't really want to give this away if you're the type of person that just wants to uh you know not look at the yeah. achievements. a couple things will just kind of come to you um let's see let's see let's see uh one of the things that you have to do is you have to make humans stumble 20 humans stumble and what i did when I was playing the games, I would run around. I would just like be weaving in and out of people, like jump out things and exploring. My daughter, no, my daughter spent like ten minutes just going around, knocking people over, stealing <laughs> their bagels, and running away. And then, like while she's running away, jumping into other people, knocking them over, and like maybe switching a, a bagel out for a phone, uh, you know, and running away with that. And this was this was hilarious to her. Like she was just having the best time, you know, being absolutely naughty uh as his cat and we were a little concerned there for a little bit um <laughs> this game's just amazing i don't i don't want to go into any more of the achievements just if you like that that type of exploration game like if you like the little gator game but you thought maybe it's too big maybe it was like too much of a pain to go around and get all the stuff this game is is smaller in scope uh when you beat the game um there will be a little bit of assist of an assist to help you find some of the collectibles uh, that you need to do some of the things you need to do like 10 times uh, those will show up on the map um and i think there's there's one thing that doesn't show up on the map and then there were there are a couple little bugs that i saw that people reported um you know in, in terms of the quest so i think that if you wait a little bit that stuff will all be ironed out i didn't have any issues uh at all uh the only issue i had was sometimes i would get stuck in the geometry like i would be jumping up onto a ledge and somehow my cat would kind of like get like embedded in the ledge and then all i could do is spin around so i would just you know save the game load the game and it would it would bring me out of that so don't don't worry for the most part you're okay um you can get right back in and keep doing what you're doing but for the most part fantastic experience i cannot uh i cannot recommend it more. I mean, if, if this doesn't sound good to you, I, I don't know. I think you're broken. Uh, it is so much fun. Uh, I just just have one quick question, just for clarification purposes, because I haven't looked into the game at all. So I'm, I'm everything I know about the game, I know because you just talked about it. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier that you have to collect. Uh, there are four fish to collect for stamina, but you said in the stage. Do you, is it broken by stages or is it, no. did you mean to say like in the game, they're like in the entire yeah, in, the, in the game, uh, in the game, it's, it's one big open sandbox. Um, and, and you're, while you are gated <laughs> by abilities, um, <laughs> you know, <it's>, sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> <Gross. over there. laughs> you're, so you're ability gated into getting to different parts of this open sandbox. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, there, there's not, there's no stages per se. Uh, okay. you're you're just going around and yeah you might not be able to go do that thing because you just haven't ha found all the fish yet um, okay i got it yeah and then uh also it it again having played it not at all um this sounds like like the really like 
well, it, I don't even want to make that comparison because I know Stray is another game that came out recently on Xbox, but had been out mm-hmm. on PlayStation before, where you play as a cat, and one of the main features is you can knock things off of ledges. But um, in that case, you're really playing almost a more narrative story, right? Where you're, you're discovering some inner workings of something or other. Um, but there, the, like the overarching story here is just trying to get back home more or less right so it's really it sounds like it's just really lighthearted. go do what you want to do just make sure you're hitting all the um upgrades to get to the next level so there's not the, like you've played stray so i'm just wondering like is there any comparison other than you both you play as cats like is there anything you could say insofar as like how they uh, like appear or approach or move like different or is it like just they're not comparable on any level no, I mean, they're similar. Um, there's definitely similarities. I, I mean, the movement is kind of similar. Um, the uh, the selecting what to jump on is a little bit similar. Um, but Stray is way more serious. Mm. Uh, it takes itself way more seriously. Um, and there's there's actually um, there's actually combat in Stray in that you want to avoid combat. Um, this game, there's, there's really no combat. Um, it, it's lighthearted. It does not take itself seriously. It it's winking while you're doing everything. It's like, oh, I gotta do that. It's, it's gonna be a good time, you know. Um, so while they're both cat games, this is the more fun, more accessible cat game. Um, even though they do they do share uh, a certain set of mechanics. Okay. Yeah, Game Pass is awesome. Like, it, it, would I have bought <laughs> yeah, this was... <laughs> game for twenty five dollars? Absolutely not. Like that is a big ask to ask someone to, to pay $25 for this game. Cause that's, you know, I'm looking at it right now. That's what it is. That's a big ask, but being in game pass, um, they're going to get a lot more exposure. They're going to get a lot more people playing this. I'm hoping for DLC and based on some of the, um, the collectible screens, there's, there's room for more things. So I, I sort of feel like they are going to add DLC at some point and hopefully they don't, they don't do that nasty thing of adding the DLC after mm-hmm. the game leaves, leaves game pass. But um, I'd, I'd be willing to buy the DLC if it's appropriately priced while it's still in game pass or just waiting for a sale, knowing that I've got this thing to come back to and, and you know, it's a good time. Bigger city. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, so I'll give you my experience with the game real quick. Uh, my daughter, who's a huge lover of cats, immediately uh, took to this, and she was just she was having. <laughs> if you watched her play, you'd be infuriated. She was just, just enjoying jumping on the walls and just like climbing up the walls and scratching things and just doing stuff a cat would do. So, it wasn't quite doing the objectives as much as other people might do. You know, she was doing the things like knocking the pots off and stuff like that. And eventually she started doing the quests. Um, she had a great time. But she popped, uh, she actually played on her tag, which is a parenting faux pas. But I said, you know what? You play on your tag because I want to play this myself too. And she got like four or five achievements just from doing fun things. And just to echo what you said, you were actually doing yourself a disservice by analyzing the list. Just play and you will laugh at some of the stuff you get achievements for doing. Yeah, I did not let just, my daughter play on my tech. <laughs> I mm-hmm. I wanted to do everything in this game because she has this habit mm-hmm. going through and doing stuff when I'm not looking. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, man, that would have been fun. This is the type of game where I just did not want that to happen at all. Um, so, And she's almost finished the game completely by herself as well. So it's doable. You were raising her right. <laughs> I'm going to have a Kush calf game tag very soon. <laughs> um and then my son has also been asking about this game and my son is almost 14 now which is crazy and he said dad it's just like untitled goose game and i'm like i don't know it's i could see where you can say that but you're not causing that much destruction i said it's not so far off from goat simulator either you're just wandering around the city and doing stuff and then he started, and he's been having a good time, too. So it's good for people of all ages. It's just, just good, plain fun. Uh, he was a little upset that there was no co-op, though. So that would have been a real fun, fun thing to do. 
maybe a future DLC or a sequel. Just pluralize everything for the sequel. Little kitties. Bigger cities. There you go. Uh, he was complaining that there was no map, but you said there is a map, so maybe that's something you have to find. Yeah, you, you, I guess. It kind of opens up as you play. Um, it'll, it'll give okay. you, like I was saying, you get more abilities. Like you get a map, you get a camera, you get. Um... Yeah, my son unfortunately has my sense of direction, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> get lost constantly. All right. So thumbs way up, it sounds, for Little Kitty, Big City. And we will go to Michelle, who has a game to talk about as well. Yeah, I do. I also have a Game Pass game to talk about, but Woo. not, you know, not quite the same thing. So it may come as no surprise if you've seen me chatting on Discord or heard me on this podcast in the past, that I was very, very excited that Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes finally launched on April 23rd. I did kickstart it, so I actually did pay full price for the game, and I have zero regrets about that. But I'm also very excited that it is in Game Pass. So for those of you who are not familiar, Aiden Chronicle is the spiritual successor to the Sui Koden series. Uh, it was written by Yoshitaka Moriyama, who was the brain behind the Suikoden series and uh he was allowed to hang out for the first three and then something happened between him and konami and very similar to uh, another disgruntled ex konami employee koji igarashi uh, at some point he went oh this is kickstarter thing and i can really get the game i wanted to make back then funded uh so in 2020 a kickstarter was started for aid and chronicle I think the original goal is five hundred thousand uh, dollars, and that included the stretch goals. And they wound up raising four and a half million. So it's a lot of excitement, uh, wow. and I was definitely one of those. Uh, that actually, it's a trivia time for you guys, if you'd like to participate. Uh, it actually made that that four and a half million made Aiden Chronicle the third highest uh, earning game Kickstarter of all time on the platform. Just curious if you guys have any guesses as to one and two. Um, was that four million? You, just you, and then they got five hundred elsewhere. Uh, I'm no. stalling. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> honestly any, have any zero. Or? Zero. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna guess. Can I guess, Kush? Are you okay. Yeah. yeah, go for it. The only big Kickstarter game that I could think of in recent memory is, uh. The Ego Egovania game, Blood Blood Stain. Yeah, yeah. Right. that is one of the two. And I, can't I would have never guessed the other one. Ones. I just happened to be doing some research today. I don't think that was Kickstarter. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's Kickstarter. Yeah. I wouldn't have come well, up with the other one. So, all right. Uh, if if you'd like to, uh, uh, I will let you know. It was apparently Shenmue mm -hmm. Three. Oh, that makes yes. Mm -hmm. I yep. That makes sense. Which was hugely successful. Um, but yeah. since I wasn't personally interested in it, mm -hmm. I don't know. And if, in case anyone's wondering about where Psychonauts 2 fits in, and this, Psychonauts 2 was actually crowdfunded through a different platform. I think it was Fig or something like that. So I, I don't know where that fits with that. But on Kickstarter, Aiden actually came in third among those games. But anyway, uh, started in 2020. It was supposed to come out in 2022. Stuff happened uh, and finally released in 2024. Um, and I, I am loving it. I am just having the best time <laughs> playing Aiden Chronicle. Game begins, you, uh, main character that you're playing as is a young man named Noah. He has, uh, left his small village and decided to join, um, join up with a, a, a I, the name escapes me, but join up with a group of soldiers who works with the League of Nations. They're sort of, a just a loosely knit group and this league of nations has a which is a loosely confederated group of countries decides to partner up with the empire which you can guess that they're probably the big bads and search for this item called a primal lens magic in aoden is run through these things magic and other skills called rune lens and primal lenses are really powerful versions of this and of course if people can control that they can have a lot of power so you Go through this mission with noah and you meet this other young man named sane who is part of a, a very established empire family and you go through your little quest and then you part ways and 
that's really just where the story begins. As you go through, uh, Aoden, much like Sui Coden Games, is more about kind of political intrigue and sort of the machinations of different empires and countries uh, working for and against each other. And of course, Sane and Noah wind up on opposite sides of these issues. And uh, to say too much more would be to spoil the story, uh, which I haven't completed yet. Um, it is a rather long game and I just have not had that much time to put into it. But it's super engaging. And again, I just love it. The main conceit of aid and that separates it from other JRPGs is the recruiting element. So as the title suggests, 100 heroes means there are 100 uh, people that you're meant to recruit to your army with Noah to help fight against the, uh, you know, incoming uh, attacks of the empire. Um, when the game was initially announced on Kickstarter, 100 was the, the goal. As they smashed through various stretch goals, I think they got all the way up to 120 characters. Um, and you recruit them by meeting them in towns, doing various quests for them. Sometimes you have to do things in certain time frames to recruit people. Uh, when Aiden launched, there were some bugs and glitches introduced with some of this recruiting because it is a lot of moving parts. But the team uh, that developed it, which is Rabbit and Bear Studio, they've been very responsive to releasing patches for the game to fix it up. It is very much a traditional JRPG. Uh, if you look around on wherever Metacritic and you kind of look at reviews, um, the game reviews well, uh, but the main complaints about it is it feels like um, it feels like the kind of RPGs I grew up with. So there's a world map, but the world map doesn't have a lot. It's just a place to get from point A to point B and fight some monsters so you can level up. Um, there's Autosaving is very, very, very infrequent because if you grew up playing RPGs in the Super Nintendo or Nintendo era, you knew save every time you can. So it has some of those trappings. For me, it feels like something comfortable that I haven't experienced in a long time. So I'm super happy with all of that. Um, for people writing reviews who may not have played an RPG until after Final Fantasy VII, these things seem maybe like they're archaic or things we've moved on from. I do not have that problem at all. I could go on and on about all the things I love about Aiden Chronicle. If you played Suikoden, it is very much that. Uh, it's full of different little mini games that aren't really too in depth at all. There's um there's like a top game, uh, like spinning tops. There's um, a card game in there. The cooking mini games from Suikoden come back in this one which was again one of those little things that excited me a lot uh, you do have the big castle that you have to fill up with all of your comrades it's a little different from the old games where they don't automatically grow in size as you gain more people there is sort of a blueprint deal that you have to spend resources to continue to make your home base grow um but yeah i i, I love it i'm having a great time i have about 25 hours in I have earned 11 whole achievements. I have not looked at the list. Um, so most of what I've earned has been progression, but some other achievements for, uh, there's actually an auto battle mechanic. So if you don't want to hit, hit fight six times because there are six members of your party, you can just stick it on auto battle. It'll do the work for you and you can modify all that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I'm having such a great time. So if you love JRPGs, I would strongly recommend it. If, they have never done anything for you. It's not going to change your mind. Um, but if if you've really enjoyed them, it's in Game Pass. It's freely accessible. It, I don't believe it gets on your tag too quickly. So if you just want to dabble and see how you feel, that's completely fine. Um, but yeah, I would strongly recommend it if that's your wheelhouse. Wow. I just I feel like there's so much other stuff I would love to say because there's yeah. so much content. Um, um, good music. But, so, uh, yeah, the music is really good. I think one of the stretch goals was actually to have a fully orchestrated score. Um, so you fully hear that. Uh, one thing from the Suicoden games that came over to Aoden as well is you don't just fight normal JRPG party battles. They also have these big army battles and one-on-one -on -one battles. And the one-on-one -on -one battles are sort of rock, paper, scissors based. And the big battles are sort of like little tactical unit type battles. Um, and there's one big battle you have that eventually becomes a one-on-one -on -one battle and there's music going on and people singing and all that. And it's very like dramatic, but very like cool and interesting. And I think the music 
is probably taken to the next level by being orchestrated. Like I've definitely had some of the tracks stick with me, but I wonder if it was like old PlayStation style music, if it would be as memorable, but it, it is good. Hmm. I'm trying to think of any other questions. Nate, you have anything? Well, I was going to ask about missables, but you I know you haven't looked into it. Um, I, I haven't, but I, I will say this much, and this is just my inclination based on kind of my experience with the older games and my guests looked at looking at things on TA. Um, in the older games, um, there were characters you could miss out on recruiting. They, you, you might have had to talk to them before a certain thing happened, or you might have needed a certain item that you didn't pick up. And I do believe there's an achievement for recruiting everybody. That said, there are a small number of people, but a number of people on TA who have already completed it. I know it's already been out for three weeks. Uh, maybe these people had guides or wrote guides or had access to that information. Um, but my, my feeling is with 30 or so people having completed the game already, and, and if you look at their time estimates, they've all put in like over 90 hours. I feel like it's there probably aren't missables you probably can go back and get everything again unless these folks are super informed or have been using those uh guides already but i can't say that for sure well in the little bit of digging i've done and i won't ruin anything for you um there is one character that is potentially missable mm -hmm. uh based on the time and other things that you do um however i do see a post here saying that they're gonna they're gonna fix that issue I think that um, issue's already been fixed, actually. Yeah, um, there, there were three or four different characters that had different little recruiting glitches that they've put patches out to fix those issues. That one could still be present, of course. But um, my understanding is that there there have been a couple that have been uh, been fixed already. So they should be good. And I'm not worried about it. Like, I'm not into playing this game to get the completion. I'm into playing it just because... I'm enjoying playing it, um, you know, as an aside from all this, uh, when I was playing, uh, you know, I would play a two or three hour session and get zero achievements because that's just, it doesn't hand them out real quick. And I was at a point where I'm like, oh, I'm going to sit down and play this game. I have to earn an achievement somewhere first uh, and then play so I don't have to think about it the whole time. Uh, and actually this past Sunday, my streak broke. I just was busy and it was nothing special. I just forgot. And it's actually a relief to think now that I can sit and play and just enjoy and not think about, you know, did I get an achievement somewhere else before I sit and actually really take time with a game I'm enjoying and have that in the back of my head. So uh, whether or not I, it's missable is not as big a deal to me. And I think for most people who are going to sit down and play a 100 hour game, it may matter to them, but most people who are playing it are probably going to play it because they're interested in playing and not as worried about that. I will say though, the game does have tracking, which is not something I expected. So you can't actually see your progress toward uh, various things. Well, I feel like we buried the lead. Uh, we should have started the show with the fact that you broke your 10 and a half year streak. <laughs> uh, yeah. Huge. Uh, it was, and it was totally accidental. This past oh. Sunday was mother's day. I was just busy hanging out, doing things. I, Got home. It wasn't even on my mind. I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning. I checked TA and it still said current streak. And I'm like, well, that doesn't seem right because it wasn't highlighted green. So I popped a quick achievement in uh, Vampire Survivors on my phone while I was at work and new streak one day. And uh, for about 10 seconds, I was like, oh, man, you know, like back in the day on Windows Phone 8, you could backdate and try to fix streaks and stuff like that. And maybe you can do that now. But on the other hand, like life is really busy and to not have to think about it for me like that's it's actually nice like after those 10 seconds of frustration i'm like no 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 this is this is good like enjoy not being beholden to the achievement streak anymore well, good for you only yeah. other people would do that <laughs> yeah firehawk guy <laughs> well that's at some point you're not moving up the leaderboard anymore nope right like the people that are committed to it continue to be committed to it it's just a game of chicken at that point right and I, i'd always told myself like oh i really want to break it because i've done something cool like i'm out doing something or whatever and no just just life happened and uh yeah like you know i'm, I'm <laughs> i have a really busy 
stretch coming up between now and Saturday and to not have to think about what point in the day I'm going to be able to stop and get an achievement somewhere. I'm so much more relaxed about all this. So no, it's, it's actually, if it's something that motivates you, that's awesome. Keep doing it. But for myself, uh, like, I don't wish I had broken the streak sooner, but I'm, I'm glad it's done. Well, well, awesome. I'm, I'm actually, like I said, I, I think that's the bigger story really here. But, it. um, <laughs> uh, but going back to the Eden Chronicle, um, Hundred Heroes. I, for you know, those of you that aren't necessarily, um, uh, you know, Kickstarters and like super into the game, and mm-hmm. you just kind of want to, maybe you're a mixture of like achievements and gameplay, or you're just there for the achievements. There are recruitment guides. There are other guides. People are putting stuff together. Um, not saying it's the best way to play, but if that is the way that you do play, those things are available now. It looks like it's been out long enough. Yeah. And I, I just, um, it, it is definitely something you can do because, it, because the game is a hundred hours and uh, you know, it doesn't invite you to play it more than once, right? Like that's a lot of time to invest. Um, so yeah, if, if that's something that's really going to hang things up for you, I'm sure as you're saying, cause like people know which characters are the ones that are potentially missable or, or might cause an issue. So I'm sure they're, they're highlighting those characters as well. So you can do that research because the deal with all those characters is they're not going to spoil the story. There's this kind of big overarching story that's going to involve Noah and Sane and, and like the couple of key characters, but you know, the, the third cook that you recruit probably not going to affect everything so if you want to look into that that's that's still something you can do all right and one more question to kind of help people kind of prepare how they're gonna how they're gonna go through it um how does the save system how's the save system work can you can you keep a save can you keep a save like what you think is a big moment and then just have a new save be your running save or yes so um slots as i don't know how many slots there are actually i've used two myself um there are uh, definitely multiple saves. I don't. I believe it's one of those games though where you can't have like multiple like new saves, right? So you can't start like a second new game necessarily. I but I I not one hundred percent sure of that. There is an auto save, but it only auto saves when you're on the world map. Um, and one of those complaints that some folks have about the game is some of the dungeons are tedious. And I think I said to Elle at some point, like a couple weeks ago, I'm like, wow, I just spent two hours going through a dungeon because it's been a long time <laughs> since I've played something. So again, doesn't bother me, but if that's something that does bother you, it's something good to know. And it will not autosave at all during that dungeon. It will not. There are ample save points though. Like every time it loads into a new screen, there is a save point there. And frequently there are two, one at the beginning of the area and one at the end of the area. So you have more than enough opportunity to save. And also fairly early in the game, you can purchase these things called uh, rune shards of return. And you can use them anywhere in the dungeon. It'll warp you right back to the beginning. So you can hit the world map and get that autosave. But be aware of that as you're going through. Um, So there's always that autosave spot, which may have had its last save drop a couple hours ago. And then you can drop multiple saves. The only multiple save I've used, this is another thing that harkens back to Sui Code. And there's one point where you have to give someone your name and it's your legit name and then some other kind of reasonable throw name and then a completely ridiculous throw name that is is something where, again, if you've played Sui Code and you're like, oh man, that's totally something in there for me. And I put a save there because I was thinking maybe I'll go back and give the fake name and see if there's different text, uh, but I haven't bothered to do that as yet. Sounds like you're really enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, the only the only little downer I have has nothing to do with the game. So the as I mentioned before, the creator of the game, Yoshitaka Moriyama, um, he actually he passed away in February. So the only little sadness I have is from like the fact that putting this time in and having a successful Kickstarter and he didn't get to see that happen. And I have a curiosity because the team has more or less confirmed there is going to be a sequel um and how that's going to work um because when he stopped developing the sui Koden games he did the first three uh and then the fourth one was handled by other people within konami uh in my opinion the fourth game was terrible and that's mostly because it was sui Koden on boats um but uh you know apparently this wasn't something that was unforeseen and he worked with the team and kind of he's the main scenario writer so gave them those notes so it's it's a little sad playing the game knowing that that's kind of the end of his story arc, but what he left was really wonderful. Wow. 
was the team able to patch a, a tribute in or anything for him? I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm just I curious. Don't, I don't maybe, know the, maybe the credits. Maybe because there's a lot of um, a lot of the Kickstarter goals were things like um, you know have your portrait in the game or have your pet in the game. So there are all sorts of little animals in the game that have names that are frequently not capitalized and that drives me nuts. <laughs> but that's clearly how they were submitted to the team. Uh, I think there, there's an achievement uh... for interacting with ten cats because there are just cats everywhere. Um, so they could have, but I think the game had already gone gold by the time he had passed away or was very close to it. So if they did, it was probably something they patched in later. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying this. Yeah. And I've I strongly recommend it. come out. <laughs> yeah. Like strong recommend it. Uh, yeah. I feel it's part of the deal with breaking the streak though. Cause now in my head, instead of thinking of like, I have to play pity pit to get an achievement tonight. I'm like, Oh, if I, when I finish Aiden, maybe I can finally get back to like a sea of stars or something where I might play it for two hours and not get an achievement that night. Yeah. It's liberating. There's no way you're going to be two timing on uh are you done with sea of stars? Like, I'm not going to play now. it now. No, 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 no. Right. I wasn't implying now. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I've, I've, I, I don't have the mental capacity to handle two big story driven games. Right. No, no. Like as often as awesome as little kitty, big city sounds part of what's so uh, appealing about it is, as you said, it's a cozy game. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's not, you're, you're, you're just enjoying being in that moment. Um, when you're playing these more story driven games and you know, whether it's, it's something like an Aoden or you're playing like a mass effect or a red dead redemption or whatever, you're kind of thinking about all these story arcs and what's trickling down from them. It's a very different gameplay experience. So I might be able to throw in some little kitty big city, but there's no way I could do another big story based game right now while I'm playing this one. No, right. All right. Hopefully we'll have you on again in the next month or two to, uh, let us know your progress. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. Um, one other quick thing that I didn't get to mention before. Um, I, mm -hmm. If you played Aoden Chronicle Rising, which was the game that I guess as you listen to this will have just left Game Pass. Um, mm. But if you had happened to play it beforehand, there are a couple of small things that do load into the game or into Aoden Chronicle 100 Heroes. Um, there's a, a rune, which is how you get magic in the game. And the uh, three characters that you play as in Rising, um, those events take place about eight months before the events in Hundred Heroes. And uh, you're able to give the give names to certain things like their weapons. That stuff will carry over into Hundred Heroes. So there, there's a little something you get. It's nothing huge. It's you know, if you don't play a Rising before, you're not really going to miss out. But it, it has a little connectivity thing if it sees that you have a, a completed save from that game. We love when games do that. Just little added incentives. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's amazing. I'm not even anywhere near done with the game. And I just got, you know, one of the backer updates. It's like, okay, the DLC story expansion. I'm like, wait, 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 stop. Oh, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not ready. Uh, so, yeah, there's still going to be continued support. And uh, Aiden's going to continue to uh, ex expand. I, I would think much like, uh rising though it's not going to be a very long game pass staying and i imagine uh kushu and freem will dive more into that about a year from now but like it's probably something if you're interested in it and your only intention is to play through game pass you should jump on that sooner rather than later because it's going to take time and and it's it's not going to be a super long stay you said a sequel's already all but confirmed yeah the so the the developer obviously again unfortunately passed away but he um the main artist for the game junko kawano also worked with him on uh sui koden and i think took the reins after he had left it and that's the intention now with aiden as well is that she'll take over um and there was a reddit ask me anything i think and and she said something along the lines of you know we're already in the process of talking about the next game so does that mean a second Kickstarter? I don't know. I don't know. Just curious. It's a good question. Um, the it's not like um, it's not like a Psychonaut situation where they were eventually purchased by Microsoft to kind of fill the gap and all that. Five hundred five Games is uh, distributing Auden, but I I don't think you know it's it's not that they are now 
absorbed into 505 games. So I don't know. I'm not sure how they plan to handle that. Or if there's something because the original Kickstarter went so far above what they were anticipating, if there's monies from that that they can use toward a future project. Mm -hmm. Very okay. good question. I'll be ready to back it, though, if they need it. I'll be there. You'll be there. <laughs> yep. 5,000 heroes. We're, we're <laughs> ready. We're, we're ready. I have to make up a pet to get into the next game. <laughs> All right. So that was Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes. Uh, before we go to sales, I believe it's important to note that there is a sale that I believe was unexpected for non backwards compatible. 360 games, and there's a decent amount of them, maybe like 50 or 60 games. And they're like steep discount, like 75 to 90% off. Yeah, a lot of them arcade are, <clears throat> are arcade titles. Um, and TA just posted an article a little bit later today, uh, being Tuesday, saying that there are more 360 sales confirmed for June and wow. July. Um, so those will be so, June 18th and July 16th. Wow. Well, so do you think these are perm perma discounts? Oh. Mm. oh um, I mean, I think you can see that. I know you can see that for backwards compatible games. Like they'll say how long the sale is for. I don't know right. if that's the case for the 360 store. Um, so it, I don't know. I would hope so. Um, hmm. Are you going to add something, Michelle? Because I'm looking at this list. No, they're, and they're honestly... calling. <laughs> I was going to say there's at least five Just Dance titles. Um, but in the. <laughs> there's a lot of Ubisofts on here. Yeah. <laughs> in the post on Xbox Wire, they're calling them price reductions, not sales. So I imagine that's meant to imply that they're, they're reduced, like they're cut down. But they, they don't make that clear. They don't. Oh, actually, it says here, these price reductions will remain in place for each game through this 360 store closing on July 29th. So, yes, these are permanent price reductions. Okay. Now, there was a research. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. there's a lot of stuff on this list and more stuff coming. But it, you you said and... a lot of Ubisoft because clearly Ubisoft is one of the partners that's like, yeah, we'll take 80% you know, off the original price because we'll just take whatever – whatever little bit we can get from this uh, before the store closes. There's no harm in it to them at this point. I have to decide if I want to stack Valiant Hearts to Great War. Great game. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do. Three dollars. Absolutely you do. <laughs> on, on the first cast that list, game. that was the only game that immediately stood yes. out to me. <laughs> it's the only one. The only one? Oh, geez. Okay. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> Well, we don't have enough time. <laughs> yeah, we do. This is what we're here There's for. There's so many things to look through. I'm considering handball. My body coach. Oh, <laughs> I mean, wait, which one? <laughs> a lot of handball. Uh, these some of these games are a dollar. A uh, some of them are three dollars. So it's just kind of like, well, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, I mean, snipers. I was looking at snipers. Uh, I was looking at. Not saying I'm buying them, but I'm just saying I'm looking at them. I mean, I have all these AAA games that I haven't played. None of these really stand out to me, honestly. Book of Unwritten uh, Revenge. Well, if if you have a uh, an Atari game, if you have a yeah. four person group that is looking for a game that's worth, I think, two hundred gamer score to play, Final Exam is out there. Um, yeah, we played that a little bit. It wasn't bad. Like it was, and for mm -hmm. the new price, like that's just something you can have on the back burner if you have a group you're looking to play with. Child of Light was really good. I don't know that I'd want to play it a yeah. second time, but I, you know, it's a solid I think game. That has a broken guy now. Uh, no, you can fix it. Otherwise, oh, okay, you can. You, you can choose that one. Ending... You, can you still? Yeah. Well, I mean, I did it when it was, um, you know, discontinued slash unobtainable. It was doable. You just had to kind of stick with the the method that they suggested. Right? Now, can that be done? I don't know. Last week, I don't know. But when I did it, it wasn't you know necessarily <laughs> a new solution. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, you could do it, I think, but it would pop offline. I'm pretty sure. Oh, but yeah, who cares about that? You're still getting it. You just can't <laughs> use it for contests. I am oh, you mean like the type that I win? 
Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean the I the like 360 Goose. version oh. still has the the 20 the Xbox One workaround. So um, I see people saying it took me 20 tries, but it worked. So yeah. I, I guess there there is that. If that is something that was holding you back, now it doesn't have to. I want to say it took me like 20 tries too. It wasn't like a, Oh, I got it on the fifth try. It was like, I got it on a some multiple of 10th try. Uh, it actually worked. So it's, it's all about timing and just getting lucky with the timing. Okay. Uh, so, so it yeah. is doable though. So. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm anxious for other people to uh, go buy alone in the dark, really cheap. And. Uh, uh, oh, it's supposed to be us, bad. Uh, uh, I, I have, I, it, it is bad and it controls bad, but I still, I I was okay with it when I played it. So I just need other people to oh, yeah. buy it and tell me how wrong I was. And that'll be a lot of fun. GLP. <laughs> I can't believe that game came out 16 years ago. <sighs> now, one thing they didn't mention, at least, you know, having not read the articles, uh, is <laughs> none of them, to my knowledge, have mentioned DLC, like a DLC sale um, for 360 stuff. Like maybe that's in the works. Um, that would be nice to see that happen. Yeah, the only thing it mentions with that regard to nice. DLC is that your DLC will still be playable once the store closes. So yeah. uh, they at least acknowledge the existence of DLC in the body of the article. So hopefully that's, that means that's, that's something they're considering. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Nate, is there anything from the real sale that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I seem to have lost my my 360. I'm gonna have to open some more tabs or look at my tab history. Um, <laughs> as for sales for this week for things that are not 360, um, a sports game that I would actually be interested in playing: Super Slam Dunk Touchdown. This is my kind of sports in that it's oh. not really a sport or it's just a silly sport. Um, it's 450 down from 15. It's a sports collection uh, genre from TA. Uh, what is it? Well. It's kind of like basketball, but um, yes. not even that organized. Apparently, Easy you can boy. choose like players or like different athletes. So, like, oh, if you choose the basketball athlete, you get to do, you know, you can score from a certain range. You're almost guaranteed to score. And I don't know. I was just doing a very quick read through on it. It just looks fun. It's five dollars. I'm, I'm going to pick this one up. I, I've looked at it before. I think this is the lowest price it's ever been. Uh, next up, Tools Up Ultimate Edition. 629 down from 35. Um, this is a party game. It's kind of similar to your Overcooked or, uh, you know, things like that. Um, the original game, which has DLC, uh, you have to buy separately, has an unobtainable achievement uh, or two. Um, this version, the Ultimate Edition, has all the achievements included. So they've been reduced in score to all squeeze into that 1,000. Uh, however, it does not have any of the issues with the achievements. Um, it's a kind of fun little game. It, it's hard to do single player, I guess, like Overcooked. So you may want to definitely recruit someone and have them uh, play along. I, I don't know if it's couch co-op or online. That's something to look into. Uh, and lastly, Conga Master. I know I've talked about this before. I've recommended it before. This game is just fun. It's got like um, earworm music. You'll just be singing the songs or you know humming the songs because there's no words it's two dollars and fifty cents down from ten this is dance it's basically party hard for dancing now you're not killing people <laughs> but you're steering left and right you're guiding the front of the conga line to circle around people and uh the longer you dance uh, the conga around them the uh the quicker you recruit them the longer your line is uh as you're as you're dancing around a, a person uh, the, the quicker you recruit them. It's just a fun game. It, it's a cool <laughs> mechanic. It's just weird. It's cool, weird. And uh, it's 250. Check it out. All right. Sounds good. Um, I saw a couple of games to go along with your, your main game this week. Uh, I lost them. Oh, yeah. The uh, a building full of cats and a castle full of cats are both on sale uh, because three dollars was too expensive. So building full of cats is two dollars, and a castle full of cats is three dollars. I was gonna so say four. those games are ridiculously cheap already. You don't understand, man. That dollar off that will get people to buy the game. I guess. Let me let me prove it to you, Michelle. Go buy this game. Okay. 
Thanks, Sam. Uh, sure. There, there, there seems to be a, a cat theme in these sales. There's, there's yeah. another one. Yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. that's Catty or Katie in Meow Meow Land. Cat Lateral mm-hmm. Damage, mm-hmm. Re-Meowstered. Um, yeah. Hidden Cats in London. Mimi the Cat, Mimi Scratcher. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hidden Cats in London is part of this. They, they should get their alphabetizing on track. <laughs> oh, and Hidden Through Time. That's good. That's uh, three ninety nine down from uh, seven ninety nine. That's a good one too. Do um, you have any games to recommend, Michelle? I just wanted to turn some attention to a couple of former Game Pass games that are on sale this week that are old favorites of the podcast. Uh, one is Rain on Your Parade. Uh, it's normally fourteen ninety nine. It's eight ninety nine. That game is wonderful. I want to say the version with all the DLC is also on sale. I'm just going to look that up. It is. Okay. Uh, yes, the Rain on Your Parade plus level Levels and Features DLC, which is $16.09, and that includes everything in the game. And uh, it, if you missed it on Game Pass, strongly recommend it. This, this game was a ton of fun and just had a ton of references to different games. Um, and it's a really easy play. And then also Turnip Boy commits tax evasion or um, Turnip. Yeah. Ooh. And then Turnip Boy robs a bank. I think I've got them. No. Yeah. Do I have them reversed? Uh, well, they're both games. You nailed them both. That's uh, true. <laughs> robs a bank is still in Game Pass. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get it backwards. So right. right. Turnip Boy commits tax evasion is out of Game Pass and it is on sale uh, for Three seventy four down from its normal fourteen ninety nine. It's only a couple hours long, but it again has a ton of really funny references to other games you've played. It's it does not overstay its welcome. It's funny. If you missed it on Game Pass for three seventy four, it is completely worth picking it up and trying it out. And then once you've tried that out, you can play the game that actually still is in Game Pass. Turn a boy, Rob's a bank. Brood of him. It's a bad turnip. <laughs> <laughs> turn up. Speaking of bad news slash good news, we have Game Pass news. Nate, this is our lucky day. We didn't get podcasted. We got breaking news this morning. Mm-hmm. And since Wild West is on assignment, you get to talk about the Game Pass news today. So this is your lucky day. I know. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, out now. Yeah. yeah. Kona 2, Kona 2 Brume, uh, if that's how you pronounce it or not. Uh, sure. it's an adventure. <laughs> uh, it's an adventure game for cloud console and PC. We then have Little Kitty Big City, almost Game of the Year edition. Uh, it's cloud console and PC. <laughs> it's an adventure game. It took me about six <laughs> or seven hours, and man, I want more. Uh, next up, we have Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. This is the old version, the 2015 or whatever, 2018. Um, it's an adventure game, two to three hours. Uh, it's confirmed that it is not the new one. I, I tried to download it. But in the store, it took me the the wrong one. So darn it. Uh, now talking about games that are going to be coming. Uh, due to time travel, uh, Chance of Sonar is out now. Uh, this is a cloud console PC game. It's adventure. It's eight to ten hours. I heard it's really cool, and it's not like any game you've played before. It's about learning a language through context, uh, learning multiple languages through context. It seems really cool and very different. So if you're in for something different, check it out. May 16th, there's a hockey game, Sports NHL 24. It's going to cloud on EA Play, blah, blah. Uh, then we have uh, an interesting game, Immortals of Avium, um, which is cloud console, PC, and Xbox Series X, S, EA Play, and other assorted buzzwords. It's a first-person shooter. It's 30 to 35 hours. Uh, it is like uh, it's a first-person shooter, but you use your hands weird uh then we have may 21st we have senua's saga hellblade 2 uh i know that a lot of people were saying that there's no marketing for this but uh, i'm seeing it happen kind of now but uh, it will be on game pass on the 21st it's an action adventure hopefully it's different from the first and that there's combat and more to gain to the game uh but we'll see may 23rd we have galactic care cloud pc xbox series x and s uh, steam has this genre as management and sim ta doesn't know yet uh haunty h-a-u-n-t-i-i as for cloud console and pc this is an adventure game we don't really know a whole lot about it may 28th 
uh, we have Moving Out 2, which is cloud console and PC. Uh, it's genred as party, and I don't agree with that. I also don't agree that uh, Overcooked and those types of games should only be party um, because you can play them solo. You know, there's no saying that, you know, when I think party game, I think Mario Party. Like if I play a party game solo, man, it's boring and dull and like <laughs> and pointless. Uh, that to me is a strictly party game. Um, so I think this is, I think this needs something else like action or puzzle or something. I don't know. 15. Well, let's go back to talking about hey. moving out to not you my disagreement with the genre. Alone, sorry. Uh, nope. Yeah, <laughs> moving out to 15, 20 hours. Uh, PC <laughs> stack might be uh, because it is for cloud console and PC. So maybe we'll see a stack. And uh, I love that. May 30th, Humanity for cloud console and PC. This is a puzzle game. How long to beat says it's 16 and a half hours for the full completion. This is kind of like lemmings, but uh, with people oh. instead of lemmings. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. <laughs> so go check out a video or something, see if that uh, tickles your fancy. And then lastly, uh, in the month of May, we have Lords of the Fallen for cloud PC and Xbox Series X and S. Uh, this is the new 2023 version, not that old bro oh. thing. In quotes, uh, an action role playing game, uh, my quotes, uh, and a role playing yes. game, and it's 80 to it's 100 trouble. hours. It, it's a souls like, so L's gonna play it and tell us all about it. Yes, and there's some stuff for June, but we'll talk about that uh, as we get closer to June. As for the leavings, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need what? to know why a game uh-huh. called Firework is coming out on June 4th instead of July 4th. Mm. Can you please explain because this? Because it has nothing to do with actual fireworks. Um, what, what, Katy Perry? What, like, what is? Yeah, it? no, that's that's not <laughs> what fireworks are about. Fireworks are not about Katy Perry. Um, oh, I, I hate to break it to you. All right, we're around before Katy Perry. Um, and, and like you, and, and you can't pass over the sushi game either. Well, what's going on with this? I want this. Game. I mean, I was going to talk about these more as we get to June because no. I was going to be talking about them all the way up until June. Um, yes. All hey. right, all right, fine. Party uh, game? <laughs> I work for PC. It's a Steam Adventure horror game. So if you're into that Rolling kind of like isolated uh, adventure game, uh, it's not to be confused with Firework, A Modern Tale, which no one has played. Uh, I started it's it up. <laughs> Apparently, it's difficult. So watch out. Uh, it's on the Xbox. Uh, it actually looks like an interesting game. And then the, the game that L wants me to talk about, Rolling Hills, mm-hmm. Make Sushi, Make Friends. Yes. Cloud Console and PC, June 4th. Uh, that Steam says uh, or has genred this as wholesome and cooking, so you know I'm going to check it out. Um, that's all I know is about. Wholesome it. a new is wholesome a new genre on Steam. It is yes. <laughs> oh, not a TA it? genre. When, when TA doesn't have a genre, we have to go other places, and uh, we look at Steam, and, and that's kind of what they've got. And unfortunately, TA doesn't have a cozy or a wholesome tag. But man, I love that. I feel like Steam is borrowing from uh, Netflix. Netflix has some really interesting tagging for their oh movies now. Uh, wholesome mm-hmm. as a as a tag for a, a game is is interesting because wholesome isn't a mechanic, but I, 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 it's definitely helpful in learning what the what the game would be. Well, TA or not TA, um, Netflix used to have. Uh kind of like a, a you know secret menu that you could order from where if you typed in a certain like number numerical codes mm-hmm. they would come up with the metadata for that that code so like wholesome could have been like one two three four so if you search for one two three four like you get all the wholesome and it'll uh, uh-huh. that. that was an old um you know off the menu hack for netflix uh, hmm. back in the day i just assume they still have but i don't know um enough of that let's talk about the games leaving because that's what oh. you need to focus on here for the next 15 days. Uh, Chicory, A Colorful Tale. I've talked about this. I was dreading yeah. it leaving, and now I'm going to have to focus on it uh, sometime in the next uh, <laughs> two weeks. It's Cloud Console PC. It's a puzzle adventure, Zelda-like. <laughs> it's 15 to 20 mm. hours. All of the puzzles and all the powers have to do with color and painting. Kind of cool little thing. So if, you, if you're looking for a Zelda-like <laughs> and you got nothing to do for two weeks, go for it. Uh, next up, we have Far World Pioneers Cloud Console and PC. It's a sandbox, six to eight hours. I know nothing about it. I'm going to have to look at this. Uh, next up, we have JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle Cloud Console and PC. It's a fighting game. It's 20 to 25 hours. There is a TA walkthrough. Uh, I started this, unfortunately, and I do not enjoy it. It, uh, it is not an enjoyable fighting game to me. Um, 
I just I, I just don't like the mechanics of the fighting. Now, that being said, it's pretty. And uh, if you're into JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, I think there's something there for you, uh, potentially. You know, the, uh, the moves and the specials and just the look of the game is really good. But as far as a fighting game, I do not enjoy it. Uh, next up, Pac-Man Museum Plus Cloud Console and PC. It's an action collection genre, uh, 60 to 80 hours. Um, wow, that's a lot of Pac-Man. Next up, Little Witch in the Woods Cloud Console and PC. It's venture, adventure, excuse me. It has no achievements because this was in the uh, early release, whatever. Oh, uh, preview game program. preview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, game preview. So what's going to happen? It's going to launch and then it's going to get achievements and that's going to stick. Uh, but no one played it because mm. there were no achievements. Next up, and lastly up, Railway Empire <laughs> 2 Cloud Console and PC Simulation Management, 60 to 80 hours. Does anyone actually play these games? Uh, there's one DLC and one update achievement. Uh, but it's, So it's not the uh, egregious uh, you know, train sim uh, story. This is Railway Empire uh, you know, where you're managing little stations from far away and up above, I believe. Uh, not my type of game, but... Uh, you know, 60, 80 hours. If it is your type of game and you haven't played it, wow, you got to you gotta get on it. This game has 26,000 tracked gamers, almost 27,000 on mm. TA. Um, that's that's a lot. I, I wouldn't have expected Which that. Uh, Railway Empire 2. All right. Uh, yeah, just because it Railway has Empire. DLC and whatever else. It's only been completed by 13 people. Um I'm guessing because, well, I guess with my settings, but like, wow, that's, that's impressive. It doesn't have a press start, but it does have a complete the first tutorial. <clears throat> right. But that doesn't, it's got a 1.2 ratio. It looks like. Yeah. So it, it, I'm guessing the next one that connect one rural business, like there are probably some pretty quick things you would do. So you're either doing one or the other. So, oh, wow. Hey, Jameson, we're, we're, Come on, man. <laughs> and I don't see this on your tag. It's right up your alley. Well, I mean, that's why he's off tonight. Oh, he's playing this game from that's start right. to finish. Oh, who knows? That's that's going to help him in the Gamer Score Challenge for this month. Well, he's on, he's on the Empire team, because then he could help uh, Rail... Uh, yeah. Railway Empire 2. All right, well... Looks like Koosh is going to be doing some chicory. Most people will probably, I mean, if Far World Pioneers is only six to eight hours and it's not that hard, that seems to be the one to do. Yeah, everything For me, else is an Nothing. <laughs> I mean, Far, Far World Pioneers has a, just under 7,000 tracked gamers on TA right now and has a 2.35 rating. Um, so it just seems like something if you want to try to get it done because it's in Game Pass and it's leaving, cool. But if you haven't started it yet, it doesn't seem like it's, uh, it's particularly good. So maybe yeah. best to just let that one go. It's giving me terrar- Terraria vibes just by the look mm-hmm. of it, but like Terraria, Terraria with technology. Um, I'm, I'm not even gonna... Yeah, there are only it. 10 achievements, too. Don't it's a very it. short list. There, there doesn't seem yeah. to be a whole lot going on there. Well, I mean, there's an achievement for finding a weenie. <laughs> so It's sold. <laughs> exactly. Can you pet the weenie? All right, never no, mind. No. Uh, on, to <laughs> pro- on to Brad Camp. All right, Michelle, I will. you can start us off. I will start us off in completions captain chaos has reached 100 completions el sock has really reached 500 completions dude with the face at 650 completions rocker dude is at 700 completed games and just in front of him is what the fog with 750 completed games legohead 1977 is at 950 completed games mike pitch at 1050 completed games northern last at 1100 completed games and junior mario 2004 and chewy on ice have both reached 1250 completed games congratulations everyone in streaks i know one person we won't be talking about for a while uh 
50 days. 50 but, then, days. but then we also have other people like Wheezy Fuzz, <laughs> currently on a 50 day achievement win streak, soon to be joined by Matrox. Uh, Oz Buff and Attic with 100 days. Wild West 08 with 350 days. Uh, Ahiza with 500 days. Scudder Ray is uh, with 900 days. And Northern Lass with 1,350 days. Celebrating a four year achievement win streak is Philip Wendell. In Gamer Score, uh, we have Vi571 with 400,000 gamer score. I hit my million. Woo! Uh, one mil. Uh, nice Bay, I say it again with 1,100,000 gamer score. Then we have Plug uh, with 1.2 mil. We have Dude with the Face with the 1.2 mil. Then we have Northern Last with the 1.8 mil. So, Kush, the most important question here is what did you cross over the million with? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I think we were going to talk about this last week, but we got sidetracked. Um, no, we didn't? Yeah. Yeah. We just, you were like, oh, two things to talk about. And then we just talked about wild. I was, oh, you're, you're always trying to not talk about your, your things. Yeah. Well, I was trying to get yeah. you to pop this on the live stream, but that would have probably <laughs> caused I didn't want to, what would have I happened. didn't want to do that. It's because, been a personal um, journey. I, I yeah. understand. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Personal me, journey. Me, I wanted it to mean something. So, I know I had joked about it before, like, okay, well, what I'm going to do for my last couple hundred is like all pet the dog achievements and all water. <laughs> um, and I still think that would have been hilarious, but <laughs> I didn't have time because Chewy decided to make this a like gamer score blowout month. And I uh, basically doing something funny for my 1 million was going to require me to play a way I didn't want to play. So um, I wanted to take part in kind of like this, this blowout month and just knock out a whole bunch of you know, the baby game stuff that's just been sitting around. Uh, so I wanted to blow all that out. So that's what I did. I used that to kind of like get me close. And then I had to figure out what I was going to play. And I chose Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition because I had not uh, completed the game uh, on that version. Um, so, gosh, what did I use? to sort these by one of course i don't remember the name of the thing because that's not <laughs> how the brain works uh yes the journey ends that's for completing the game so i had to i had to save you know as i was doing my research i was like okay well what do i have what do i have and i had a the hard playthrough that was you know just like an hour or two from the end of the game and that's where i left that one parked and so i said okay yeah i'll do that so i went ahead and i played uh i played that hard uh mode of the game till just before the end of the game. I then made a copy of that save. I dumbed it down to normal. Uh, and then I completed the game on normal because had I completed it on hard difficulty as well, having not completed the game, I would have uh, potentially messed up or pulled a frame and gone over by 75 <laughs> or gone over by 25 or some silly number. So I said, okay, I'm just going to slow roll it here and get this. Now this game uh, means a lot to me because I really like it uh you know it's it's my favorite genre um is metroidvania and and this game in particular is uh one of my favorite games and this game um it was also one of those games that just kind of got me in the feels and i hadn't even been playing this game and in the last two hours i started to get goosebumps again because i knew what was coming up and i knew how that uh you know that end mm -hmm. uh, sequence was going to be i knew how it was going to hit me and i knew how the the story beats after that also were going to hit me and uh that to me was worth it you know not not popping it on air just actually playing this on my own getting the one mil okay okay sitting okay. on it for a little bit and then just dumping some garbage on top again i actually <laughs> <laughs> the next thing i played actually weren't garbage they were um uh they were also ori like i went back in and i did i was like okay time to finish the hard mode uh, and I specifically did not save the game at a portal because I was like, I don't know where I am. I don't know how many portals I've saved at. And there's an achievement for saving every spirit portal with mm -hmm. my luck. I'll save there and I'll, I'll have screwed up this whole thing and I'll have to think of something else. that's a 20 pointer that's worth it or whatever. Uh, and sure enough, I saved at the last portal that was near where I was. And that was an achievement. And I was like, Oh man, okay. I actually did that right. Uh, and then I got the hard difficulty, and then I went back to my garbage. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's yeah, a nice. massive accomplishment. Yep. Did you finish the rest of the Gamerscore, peoples? 
Yeah. Uh, I did. Yeah. I finished them first and then we circled back. Okay, just making sure. Iron leaderboards. Eldritch SS is in the top 20 of the T leaderboard for cycling. Uh, Icy Thrasher is in the top 20 of the T leaderboard for collectible card game. Junior Mario 2004 is in the top 200 of England Achievements 1 and top 50 England Completed Games leaderboard. Nice. Northern Last, top 50 of England Gamers Square leaderboard. Toby Lynn is now in the top 20 of Canada Gamer Score leaderboard for point and click. All right, get, get them Canadian artifacts. Scatavace is in the top 50 of Achievements 1 leaderboard for Metroidvania. That's amazing. And even more amazing, my good buddy Tim Icefire TN is now in the top five of Gamer Score leaderboard for Metroidvania on all of TA. Wow. And that's crazy. Yeah, congratulations. That's basically all he plays when uh, we're not making him play Marvel every Monday. <laughs> Booting up his 360, pretending like it doesn't work so he can get out of playing. Can't so he really can get back to Metroidvania. Yeah. Still trucking along. Still trucking along. All right. That was a fun show. Thank you, Michelle Machark, for joining us this week. Hope to hear from you again soon. I hope Wild West is doing a diligent job on the assignment we have for him. And we hope Kushmoose can find something to replace the kitty in his heart that is completed. You need a new project to work on. That gives you the feels. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And class is dismissed. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Welcome back to Neverending Stories, a segment where I talk to patrons and staff about some of the stories and campaign modes that they had left languishing in their backlogs and get them to finally complete it. This was a 2023 contest and as we record this, it is now 2024. And as it comes out, it's probably a few months into 2024 uh, based on the rate that I'm able to get these out the door. But because of the popularity of both the contest uh, and the segments, we're going to keep rolling through, especially rolling through with the one person who managed to complete his entire list. We're only halfway through those <laughs> that list as we speak, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to keep rolling these segments out. Who am I talking about? I'm rambling. It's Hurricane Dale. <laughs> ah, it's good to be back again. I feel like I've been here so much I should have my own theme song at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Hang on a sec. Insert theme song. You've just heard Hurricane Dale's own theme song. And, and you'll be hearing it another few times because I've got quite a few games on that list to get through. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll bring it in for every one of these that are you, which is basically <laughs> probably going to be the rest of them at this stage um, because everyone else is, is done. Okay, Hurricane. What game are we talking about? Today we are talking about um, Middle Earth Shadow of War. Um, which is the sequel to Shadow of Mordor. 
Yes, confusing. I find this a constant confusion for me because the name, the two names are too similar. I want, I need, a, mm. I need a two in there somewhere or something so different that I can differentiate them um, because I keep forgetting which is which. Middle Middle Earth one and two is good enough. Yeah, all right. I imagine it's very uh, confusing for people who are new to the franchise as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Why go halfway with a name? Uh, Make it clear and concise that it's a sequel. Yeah, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, this is the sequel would do it, I think. Absolutely, yeah. This is the Mm -hmm. sequel is what I need on the end of all of my sequel games. (laughs) Yeah. Just just put put a number. Just put a number. Don't shy away from the number. I feel like it's the cool thing, you know, back in the... In the 80s, you know, when horror films were, you know, Friday the 13th, one, two, three. And then they were like, oh, let's call this one Jason Lives. And it's like, no, 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 no. Just just five. It's going to get confusing. OK. <laughs> they could have gone with the old um, Fast and the Furious method and gone with uh, Jason 7 Lives 8. Yes. Yeah. Or oh, working, working the number into the letters. So you can't say it right you know, fast yes. four, fast four, furious, fast four, four far four, fast four, fast four. <laughs> anyway, Jeleven lives. Jeleven. <laughs> Jeleven. <laughs> and they, I don't think they even got to the. Thir- they didn't even get to thirteen of those films, so they couldn't even call F. They couldn't even ever do F thirteen. It never happened. I imagine when they're sitting around in their board meetings, figuring out what they're going to call the next uh, movie, they're waiting to get to number thirteen because that's going to be the big one. Yes, they'll probably screw it up anyway. Friday the 13th, 13th. (laughs) Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Shadow of War, the second of the Middle Earth games. Absolutely. And uh, definitely the uh, better of the two uh, Middle Earth games. Not that the first one was bad. It's just the second one improves in every single way from the first one. Um, An Ah. absolutely worthy sequel. Now, it's interesting you say that and kind of exciting as well. Uh, I'll tell you why a bit later. This game came out 2017. Uh, it's a long time ago now, longer than I thought mm. in my in my memory now. Six years, seven years. You started it in 2018. And I did spy on you on your previous game in that you did play the original back in 2015. And mm. as you say, you seem to enjoy it enough. Uh, you gave it 3.5. So I guess you were looking forward to the sequel and, and you kind of jumped on it not long after it came out. Yeah, I didn't grab it straight away. I had a few friends who'd picked it up, um, but there was a lot of controversy around that title because of the whole um, microtransaction Mm -hmm. kind of affair that was going on at that stage. Um, By the time I got to it, that was completely removed. It was all cleaned up, um, and I never felt like I needed to buy anything along the way. 3.5 for the first one seems really low for me. I don't know why I rated it that low. It's a fantastic game, um, especially with the iconic nemesis system that it has, which um, Mm -hmm. for anyone who hasn't played it, the kind of idea behind that is uh, as you're roaming around the world, you'll get standard uh, enemies who will uh, fight and potentially kill you. And if they kill you, they kind of uh, gain a set of special abilities and name um, and all that kind of thing. So when you go and meet them around in the world again next time, uh, they kind of have ranked up to like a, mm-hmm. a general in the orc army or something like that. And it kind of gives them a sense of um, uniqueness and yeah. uh, personality. Uh, and, and they'll comment on the way they killed you and things like that, and yeah. um, which is really, really cool. It's like this whole idea of um, emergent storytelling and kind of an AI kind of quality as well in that each time you play that game or as you play that game, it is your unique experience. It's not scripted apart from, you know, the main storyline. All of these kind of sub yeah. are specifically unique to you. Your experience with them, uh, discovering them, fighting them. You know, some of them are cowardly and they run away and then you track them down later and they're like, oh, it's you again. Ah! Uh, and then or, or some of them like will sneak up on you and attack you um, as revenge for like, like all of this stuff is just completely unique. I guess it is a form of AI driven kind of storytelling. Um, because it's it's um, not scripted. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really it's, good. It's, it's ever really changing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and they they don't really put any walls up around it either. Like you could be doing a main mission, and then some orc that you kind of uh, killed earlier, you might find out actually survived 
um, the whole ordeal and then will uh, start attacking you in the middle of a mission, um, which yes. sounds really frustrating, but it, it's actually really, really cool because it kind of builds this chaotic fight in the middle of mm-hmm. a mission where you've got a whole bunch of different, I guess, for the lack of a better term, like boss enemies that are all trying to hunt you down for all different reasons and... Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they might even fight each other and it becomes this, like, absolute yeah. uh, whole thing of chaos where you're trying to figure out what's going on and there's mm-hmm. orcs everywhere. And and when you survive an ordeal like that, you get this, like, genuine sense of accomplishment from having, I guess, just made your way through to the other side. Um, yeah. But then if you don't succeed and you end up dying, you sort of meet those orcs again later on and you've got this genuine sense of, like... Like revenge. this genuine drive to yeah exactly you're you're yeah. after that revenge you're like oh you're the guy who mm-hmm. uh, you know made me fail that mission so and they they take it a step further actually because there's an online element where if other of your friends on your friend list have been playing the game and they have died to one of these sub bosses it comes up on your map and they're like hey by the way Hurricane Dale this guy killed Chewy you need to get revenge <laughs> so you can go yeah, exactly. and get revenge on your fallen friend with that guy. So they kind of made this way. It's a such, it's such a cool and clever system. And and then as the game develops as well, and you develop powers, it's not just about fighting them. You can also like recruit them and control them mm. as well. So they can become allies to, to, to you and you can like call on them. Uh, yeah. Amazing system. Yeah. Completely underutilized apart from these two games big waste of, of time and money that they didn't do anything more with them and, and still have them Absolutely. after all these years. Yeah, because I think they ended up patenting the system, um, mm-hmm. the Nemesis system, so no one else can use it anymore. And then they've just never used it since. Never used which it is really, since. really disappointing. Which especially now you'd expect with AI being such a massive thing is that probably it could be even better now than it ever was before. That There's probably a huge amount more possibilities to build on it than there ever was. Oh, Definitely. And even just from the first game to the second game, they built on it so much. Like, um, mm-hmm. like you mentioned the recruiting of your your like uh, orcs in, in the first game, but in the second one, you kind of can uh, take over like fortresses and things mm-hmm. like that that were held in different like regions of the map, and then you can use those um, recruited orcs to defend the fortress once you've held it. Uh, which mm. adds this whole like massive element, and you can. There's an online component to that as well, but you don't actually need to do that. But um, part of the mm-hmm. like sort of quest line towards the end there is defending all of these mm. castles, which is the thing that I hadn't done. Um, right. But yeah, it, it's really really cool to because you can use those uh, orcs to defend this castle, and then you can upgrade them and take them along on missions, and you know, it kind of has this, uh, I guess, like rallying an army kind of. Uh, feeling mm. towards it which is really really neat so yeah you started it back in uh september 18 you did mm. quite a lot in a very short period of time so in about eight days you did 36 achievements and it probably looks it does look like a good chunk of the story was done as well and then you dropped it for a few years <laughs> do you know why you dropped it at that point honestly i thought i'd finished the main missions <laughs> um <laughs> There's kind of a main storyline component to it where you're just following, like, missions and and doing all of that. And that's fine. I finished all of that. Mm. Um, But then at the end, you kind of... You get this, as I was sort of mentioning before, like, this base defense mode. And, you know, you're supposed to, I guess, take over all these fortresses. And then the idea is you're trying to defend it because the kind of... The concept behind it is, like, you've taken over Mordor more or less and Sauron's kind of trying to take it back mm. um, so you're supposed to sort of hold him off in these little battles I guess mm. the problem with that is once when the game first came out they expected you to do close to 50 of these defences to finish that section off so I completely wrote it off because I didn't really think it was an important part of the story or anything like that and I thought I'd finish the story for the most part um, by the time I came back to it four never-ending stories they'd kind of reduced it due to bad feedback so i only had to do maybe four or five defenses um which was a lot more manageable Uh, mm. because if you fail you have to start sort of the whole thing again so only having to do five of them uh was was tolerable (laughs) oh that's that's also interesting and quite exciting yeah yeah so you dropped it and then you came back in february 22 did just one achievement i'm assuming that was maybe a an RTDL or, or something like that, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then dropped it again for basically exactly a year. And then in February 23, eight achievements down, 
but none of them marked a story, but I guess it was all kind of progression and, and mopping things up. Um, mm. Before then, in May, you got that final story achievement, which says complete the Shadow Wars, and it's marked as story complete. So did, did that actually feel like that kind of story resolution? Like, is, is that appropriate for it to be marked as the story resolution? They hide the final cutscene behind the Shadow Wars, Nowadays, it's definitely worth going back and doing, I think. Mm. I, I didn't feel like it was so long and obnoxious that it was annoying to do or anything, like it was back when you had to do all the other defences. So I'd say it was probably mm. appropriately marked as story. Now, I remember in the first game, and and so this is this is why you're kind of enticing me a little bit, is because I was a, mm. a really big fan of that first game. It, it I kind of knew I might like it going in and then it surpassed my expectations. And I think a big part of that was that nemesis system. But then it also surprised me a bit because it actually presented quite, I thought, a strong storyline and sense of character and then world building along with that. They had kind of an emotional core storyline about the main guy and his family, you know, Using an untimely device, which happens at the beginning. It's not really a spoiler. It's the, it's the opening cutscene, um, and then him seeking revenge, and basically it's that story of of revenge, and then building up enough forces in order to 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 to, to, to claim revenge against Sauron and his commanders. But then this storyline, it feels like it kind of ended. It was over. It was done. Does this? Is it the same character moving into this game? And does it have that same sense of kind of? core story because what you're telling me it feels like it's more of a of a strategy game and like a world built like an army building game which seems to like undermine that somewhat that kind of like more narrative aspect um they it's still it still follows the same character um i guess the way i would look at it is after the first game you've taken out the generals but now you're trying to take out the wider area of mordor um, so it's about going to the different areas and kind of taking out all of the lieutenants in those mm. general areas. Um, I would say the base defences are less of a strategy system than I've kind of pitched it as, because it's really just piling your strongest generals into your fortress and then you know doing the standard sort of gameplay to take out orcs that are on the battlefield trying to um, invade your castle, I suppose. One thing I will say about Shadow of War is it doesn't improve the story per se. Um, It carries along the story and it does it really well and it takes it into some really interesting places that I didn't think they would go. Um, But I think it really lands really well and it's definitely worth experiencing. Um, Mm. It's super interesting, especially the ending. They kind of take this huge left turn and it's it's a real twist ending and I think it, it it's really, really interesting and it kind of opens the door to hopefully another game, but they obviously haven't released it and it's been five mm-hmm. years at this point, so Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if the controversy around this game maybe halted any plans for any other ones. I don't know how successful it was as as a game in its own right as well. So, so part of why I didn't jump on it um, was that initial, obviously that initial release controversy kind of made me go, ooh, oh, um, I don't know, it doesn't sound like, mm. it sounds like they've gone, like what I loved about the first game was strong narrative, strong sense of character, nemesis system, but also it was a very kind of, it's an open world game, but it, it felt very doable. It wasn't sp- yeah. too sprawling, it wasn't too much, they, it wasn't a massive grind. It was very completable, apart from two achievements, which I haven't managed to do, which are the ones we have to, in the DLCs, the, the ones you have to do in a certain time, which I know are, are, a, are a stopping point for some people. But other than that, very, yeah. very easy, very doable. And this one felt like it was like, okay, that they went the um, more is better approach. And they just, it, it felt like anyway, going in, uh, they yeah, added the massive load of microtransactions. They made, they made everything bigger. They asked you to do a stupid grind. And I didn't get a sense from at least the press that they really cared as much about story and character and, and, and stuff like that um, because they focused very much on the kind of army aspect of it, the war aspect of it. Yeah, th- there was definitely a lot of controversy, especially around the um, the microtransactions when it first came out. But that's definitely been cleaned up um, a lot now. Um, a lot of the microtransactions were around essentially like buying uh, the orcs that were, I guess, stronger than the ones that you had. Um, 
but I guess they balanced it out because at no point did I ever feel like I really needed to um, spend any money. I, I didn't. I didn't even know the store was there for most of the time. Um, mm. So that was qu- quite refreshing because I guess there's nothing worse than playing a game and then you know having a starter bundle or something pop up uh, five minutes into you going through it. Yeah, especially if you've paid full price. You know, triple uh, A. Yeah. You know, game. Oh, by the way. You're going to find this quite slow and difficult unless you pay us more money, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I never felt like my progress was halted. I played through it pretty much exactly the same as I did the first game. Um, I didn't do the ending uh, simply because I didn't realize that there was any story tied behind that whole Shadow Wars thing. And by the time I'd come back to it, they'd removed the grind from that. So um, mm. it was, you know, kind of one to two hours worth of play time, which didn't feel like it overstayed its welcome. Um, I got the ending cutscene. It was really satisfying. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess coming into it so much later than when it had first come out, I kind of avoided all of those, all of that negativity around the game. So I, I have nothing but positive things to say about it. But um, I could mm-hmm. understand why some people um, would feel a bit jaded by it if they paid Definitely. full price and then and then yeah. kind of were asked to pay more money just to Mm -hmm. get through it well and people like me who were kind of just put off the whole thing because of hearing of those things and now i'm actually thinking yeah no this this is great i'll I'll jump on that you Mm. know it's it's the sequel i I wanted (laughs) not the sequel maybe it's at least presented itself uh, at first yeah so you you did that story mode achievement you, you got it wrapped up you're left pretty much almost with the game complete you've got a handful of achievements left in the base game um, Mm. which look like it's kind of clean up quite a lot there's also one here though that stands out here that's um, for reaching the rank of captain in online conquest Um, you said there was an online component Uh, what does that entail Um, it's essentially that base defense system that you go to do so the idea is um, for each of the I guess fortresses you take over when you've gone and dominated orcs in that area, you can kind of place them in the fortress just to defend it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's uh, the online mode is essentially you going to other people's fortresses and trying to take them over. So what you do is you bring some of your orcs along um, just so you have people on the battlefield. And then it's kind of just um, running up to someone's fortress, trying to take out all their captains, which is a pretty standard affair in that game. And if you manage to take out their sort of leader, then you won. And um, the good thing is, Captain isn't the highest rank, so it doesn't seem like you have to play online for that long. Right. Hopefully. So is it actually online as in you're playing real-time against people, or is it that you're playing against people who, it, like, their their orcs, their armies, but they don't have to be present, you know, it's, it's just... Yeah, they like don't it, need it to would be, be like if I logged in now, I would see you've got an army of your orcs and things, and I could go and fight you. Yeah, so it, it's just it's only online in that it's using my friends or other people and their stats and, and numbers and things. Yeah, it's just pulling their data and what they've built up as their fortress. Yeah, because I remember as well another thing about Shadow of Mordor was there was a window of time where. Uh, it caused uh, a wave of panic because they announced server shutdowns for that game. And that game had this online component. And, and part of the online component was, you know, this whole, oh, your friends, you know, avenge your friends thing, which didn't have any achievements, yeah. I don't think, tied to it. I can't remember now. But the one people worried about were those two um, do it within a certain time achievements in the DLC because I seem to remember that, that people thought it might be tied to a leaderboard. Uh, an online thing an online component mm. which might make it uncompletable so people rushed <laughs> to do it uh, and then it didn't make a blind bit of difference anyway uh, and those yeah. achievements remain available do you if they did a similar thing with this game though bearing in mind it's warner brothers and i think they have a history of, of you know shutting things down um mm. this would definitely be un- unattainable I think. Um, yeah, it's definitely mm-hmm. enough online that um, if they did a server shutdown, I imagine that that achievement would be unobtainable. Mm-hmm. However, I guess the amount of online that they actually need to maintain for the system that they have is fairly low maintenance. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping that means that they'll have some sort of fail safe or they won't close it down super quickly. I'm not really sure. But um, <clears throat> yeah, if 
it's probably worth going back and getting that yeah. uh, online achievement just so, so you're they not do, they do out have of it. history uh, mad max is one that went down a couple of years ago uh, mm-hmm. and people had to again rush to get the they, they had these little they're not they're not core multiplayer online components but there is an online element like a little tiny yeah. online element but it's enough that it can like screw you out of a completion if you don't make a sense do you know how much effort it would take to get to captain or time um, <clears throat> not off the top of my head. I think Captain's only two ranks in, so I imagine it wouldn't take oh, too okay. long. No, not too bad. Yeah. Possibly. Um, although I haven't done it yet, so uh, take that with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then there's DLC as well. So like the first game, uh, the first game had two DLC packs, and I th- seem to remember they were really good DLC packs. Mm. You've got Blade of Galadriel, which you haven't started, and then Desolation of Mordor which you have. Yeah, there's a f- yeah. I think there's two or three in there. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, I haven't started Desolation... Of, sorry, I haven't started Blade of Gladrill yet. Um, I have started uh, Desolation of Mordor. Desolation of Mordor is fantastic. Um, both of those DLCs, you follow a different character. And kind of the gimmick behind it is they don't have the like ring powers that you get in the main game. So if you die in those DLCs you kind of have to load a checkpoint and go again. Whereas mm. uh, in the main game, as you know, uh, if you die, you kind of respawn because you have powers. So it, it adds this sort of really unique element because you kind of don't feel like a super soldier in the middle of Mordor. You kind of have to be a little bit more tactful with it. But um, And I was a bit worried about that, to be honest. I didn't think it would be uh, much fun because I feel like it would have lost some of its charm. But... Um, If anything, I feel like I enjoyed it more. That Desolation of Mortal DLC was really, really good. So I highly recommend that. Um, I can't recommend Blade of Gladrill yet because I haven't played it. Mm -hmm. But I'll get there eventually. But both of them are also kind of mainly story-based DLCs as well. So um, again, they're kind of uh, the worry of them like adding some some nonsense modes um, in there. Actually, no, they've they've, they've made an effort to make some, some decent content. Um, yeah, they're quite good. I like mm-hmm. them. And I'm assuming, like like all your other games, this game remains open in your collection for things like RTDL or any other picks. You're, you're not kind of done-done with it. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it'll stay open, and um, hopefully it will come up in enough contests that I'll uh, eventually finish it off. Nice. If uh, you were put off by the initial controversy of um, Shadow of War, uh, it's definitely been fixed. It's a fantastic game, so um, don't sleep on it. It's really, really good. Mm -hmm. Well, you persuaded me. I mean, I I say that. I've got a massive backlog, but it goes higher up. It goes higher up the priority (laughs) list than maybe climbs the uh, ever-growing list. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to make so my twenty twenty-four is the year of three hundred and sixty cleanup. By which I mean. Mm non-backwards compatible because i have this commitment that by the end of the year my 360 will be permanently retired mm. and I, I you know i'm just tired of I, I i i keep it under my sofa and every time or uh couch uh, i every time i play i have to plug it in and it's like a it's a nuisance so i just want it done yeah I'll be gone 2025 on the other hand is going to be the year of the triple a for me hopefully it's the year of the shadow of war i think it will go on there yeah i've got basically a bunch of games that you know i love my indies but i do have a bunch of triple a games that sit in the backlog uh tempting me so i was going to try and put some focus in there so this will sit mm. nicely on there if i don't get to it this year which seems crazy because we talk about years but that's how, that's how we roll with these By that stage, we might even mm-hmm. finally have a threequel. I guess we'll see. That would be nice. We haven't heard anything. We, we had Gollum uh, in the. Look, in, we don't talk about Gollum. <laughs> Middle Earth <laughs> game. It's, uh, that's, a, that's the point, actually. Is Gollum in this one? Because I remember when he turned up in Shadow of Mordor, he was done really, really well. Obviously, yeah. he's like the film version of Gollum in those games. And uh, I, I, I really enjoyed him turning up in Shadow of Mordor. Um, I can't remember if Gollum um, shows up, but I will say that there are some other characters from the films that show up. Ooh. And I'll leave that intentionally vague. This is years before those, isn't it? But I guess there are characters from years before. Yes. Um, It's not the characters you would think it would be, but um, I was very surprised to see them nonetheless. Ooh. With with the actors returning, or different actors? 
Um, I actually can't remember. An ant. There's an ant that turns up. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I recognise that ant. <laughs> Cool. Right. Well, Hurricane Dale, thank you for finishing off Shadow of War and look forward to speaking to you on your next NeverEnding Story. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.